Welcome back to Birdman Drug Stories. I'm do a little early morning episode before I go off to my day job. I'm just wondering why I have a collared shirt underneath a basketball jersey. I just didn't really want my day job's company name on Birdman Drug Stories. Although all my bosses, coworkers know about Birdman Drug Stories, most of them have subscribed. Thanks for subscribing, and most of them have bought candles from our small business, Eclatant LLC. Like us on Facebook, shameless plug. But that's not why you motherfuckers are here. I always know why you're here. You're here for some drug stories. You got a little special early morning episode. The sun's just coming up. I slept, which is good, not like back in the day, you know, 10 years ago. The sun would come up. By just peeking out that window over there. See the window? Not that window in particular. Just a window in general up in Massachusetts. But um, We're going to dive right in. We're going to dive into my little county jail stint again. Worcester, Mass. Five summers ago. That's like uh, looking like uh, just over five years. Maybe like close to five and a half years. I was locked up in Worcester. Massachusetts, Worcester House of Corrections, and I uh, only did a few months there, cases all over the state, I'm not going to rehash all that, shit's already on my channel, but i tell you stories, and be what it was like being, uh, I learned a word in jail, it's, the word is indigent, now I'd never heard this word indigent before, didn't know what it meant, but I soon found out, I found out indigent means you're there, you have no money in your books, and you have nobody helping you on the outside. You're just there. You're stuck. And there ain't nobody there to help you. No money on your books. I had that many dollars on my books for my summer there. Which reminds me, it's like kind of fucked up. I had desperately written like you know, my parents, my sisters and whatnot. And one of my sisters actually like, she uh, she sent like $25 which was cool, she sent $25, but what's frustrating was they had some stupid rule in Worcester County House of Corrections that the first like $75 goes into like a deposit account. Basically, if you don't put in at least $75 or more, you can't use any of the money. If you over 75, it's fucking the stupidest shit. My sister wouldn't fucking know that. She thought she was helping me out putting 25 on my books. Um, I got like a, a little fucking jail note letter thing saying somebody put $25 I'm like yeah and then like in small print it said you only need 50 more dollars to be at even I'm like what the fuck and like I owe the jail negative $75 to get any commissary and of course I, I wrote back and you know she didn't write back after I wrote her saying that thanks for the money but it didn't really do me any good not that I wasn't appreciative of it I was appreciative of it but I was just frustrated that, man, someone finally did help me out. And I, maybe I can buy some, like, honey buns or some ramen noodle soups up in there. But, uh, no, you can't unless you have fucking, like, I think it's, like, $75 or more. They put a deposit or a hold. Some stupid shit. I mean, this is the type of shit you're on. You're in fucking jail. You can't make money for yourself. You know, luckily, I had one sister out of my whole entire family that felt bad enough and forgave me enough and wanted to help me enough to put a little bit of money so I could like buy some snacks and shit, like regular jail food instead of the stupid little state trays. And it didn't do me any fucking good. You want to talk about frustration? I was immensely frustrated. I couldn't, I couldn't come to terms with it. Like someone finally fucking put a little bit of money on my books. I was, I was all excited. And then you get the little net, little letter from jail saying that you're still like negative 50 in the hole. I was like, what the fuck dude? So you know, getting that money was actually like a detriment because I didn't actually get the money. Actually, that money is still like in Worcester jail. They fucking motherfuckers still owe me $25. I'm calculating the interest, five years of interest, $25. Uh, by my rough math, mind you, I'm not a mathematician. I think they owe me about $2,000. So I'm going to send that bill in the mail today. I might even send them a little, a little complimentary candle. Let them know that I made it out here. Bird gang. But being indigent in jail is no fucking joke. Yeah, I got lots of jokes. But being indigent and not having any money in your books in jail is not one of them. Where I literally remember looking up and down the cell block like during the one hour tier time. It was 23 hour lockdown in Worcester County Jail. 
an L block and looking up and down and you see some real low lives, you know, myself included. I was in there as a fucking degenerate dope fiend with nobody left. It's not like I was holier than now. I was a piece of shit just like the rest of them. But what really hurt my mind was trying to think that in Worcester jail, which is a dirty ass, nasty ass fucking city, fucking the gutter. And all these other, all these other inmates in there, all these other convicts and inmates in there, they were all like with all this plenty of money on their books. Like, yeah, my mom dropped me off some money or my girl dropped me off some money. Now I had no girlfriend at the time. So my girl wasn't going to drop me off any money. I hadn't met Nicole yet, thankfully. She didn't really need to meet the, uh, the dope fiend bird, man. Probably wouldn't be engaged if she did. I probably owe her $2,000. But it was real, real rough being in there with no money. You look around up and down the cell block. And I was, remember thinking to myself, and this really beat me down. This really was like, bang, a punch right to the mouth. Which was, I look up and down. And in this horrible, shitty-ass jail. In this horrible, shitty-ass city. I said the last video too, shitty-ass city. I was talking about Springfield in the last video. But this one, Worcester, is equally shitty, if not shitty Er. Shitty city jail, shitty walk. It was fucking rough because I'm looking around. I'm like, am I really the biggest piece of shit in Worcester House of Corrections? Because I think that I am. I didn't think I was when I first walked in there. I was like, I'm probably the nicest guy here. I'm fucking not that bad. Just a dope fiend. I'm like a harmless little dope fiend. But I wasn't harmless. I caused lots, lots of terror. <laughs> I caused lots of fucking years and years of reckless, selfish behavior that landed me there so i was right where i needed to be at the time was jail i didn't see it when i was in there it wasn't like i didn't walk into jail like this is exactly where i need to be right here this is the place for me everything's gonna work out fine i'll do this little jail stay here i'll get out you know i'll pass my probation for a year I'll, I'll graduate the sober house program you know once i do that i'll move away to charlotte north carolina once i move there you know, oh, don't forget, I got to meet my girl before I moved to Charlotte. So I did that. And then I'll meet this beautiful girl. And then we'll move to Charlotte. And then I'll get back into car business, have great success. And open a, start a, a small business, Equitan LLC, soy candles. I didn't walk into jail thinking all this shit. I walked into jail a beaten, defeated, dope fiend, fucking heroin addict, mess, selfish piece of shit that didn't know anything about life. And I learned a lot about life in jail. I'll tell you what, I grew up more in the in the three or four months I was in Worcester jail than I had grown up or matured in the previous 10 years. By far, those three months, I grew up and matured a lot more than I did the past 10 years. The past 10 years, I could go scheme a drug dealer, rob a drug dealer, get over on people, not worry about it. Now in jail, you can't really do shit like that. Well, I guess you can, but there's nowhere to run and there's nowhere to hide. So you have to learn valuable things about life like paying your debts if you have a debt in jail you're gonna pay that debt or you're gonna get fucked up every time that's my experience there and dudes would warn me about it like, hey first time in i was like how how fuck do you know it's my first time in they're like we can just tell rookie i'm like sitting there like i don't know i think one of the dead giveaways actually this dude two cells over i was in like the corner cell block so this dude two cell blocks over i remember I was writing one of those desperate letters, I think, maybe to, like, uh, my family or maybe, like, an ex, like, trying to get money on my books, like I said. And I was uh, writing, like, a desperate letter, like, please, they won't feed me enough in here. I'm already skinny. I was like, I'm going to die. If I don't get food, they're going to just start raping me. If I don't have honey buns and, and ramen noodles to bring to the table, they're going to start fucking gang raping me in the cell. You know, writing desperate shit that, like, wasn't even true in the letter. So I hadn't fully grown yet. It was still new in the jail learning these things. So I wrote a desperate letter, like I said, and I didn't know what to do with the fucking letter. I'm like, we're, I don't have a mailbox in my outside my cell. So I was like, wrote the letter, and the seals are walking by, and they're always walking around. As they're walking by, I'm like all oh, fishy. Looking back on it, I could see why these kids had to question me about it. They're walking by, and I was like, hey, CO, yo, CO, you know how you do it, yo, CO. So I'm yelling to the CO, he comes over, and of course, in jail, it's like, Someone yells for a CO. Everybody scatters up to the little fucking little windows in the doors to see what's going on. Like, who's talking to the fucking CO? Someone out there is snitching right now. And everybody goes to look at it. And I was like, such a little bitch too in there. I was like, here's CO. 
I was like, can you please give this letter to my family so they can get money on my books so I can eat ramen noodles and honey buns, please? Like a little straight hoe. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I don't know if he even fucking... Don't know what he did with the letter or if he sent it out. I think he might have. I don't know. I have no idea if he sent it out or not because I never got a response for this particular one. Um, So... Uh, you know, so I give him the fucking, I give him the fucking little envelope with my little fucking jail letter to my family, begging and begging, like usual. Um, hadn't matured yet. This is my beginning times in there. And so I give it to him, I'm like, this dude, like two cells down, fucking old school junkie. He was probably a couple years younger than me, even, but he was an old school junk. He was way deeper in the game than I was. Like I said, I had never met the fucking yet. I can't even say what I haven't met yet because I'm afraid they'll take down my video for mentioning anything that has to do with a fucking N-E-D-L-E. -E. Spell that one. Because I made a little video about the N-E-D-L-E -E and the V to the A to the X and they took my shit down and gave me a strike. So I'm not even going to mention anything about that. What I'm saying is that I haven't met the fucking thing yet and everybody else that was in there as a junkie who's like, fucking rookie, <laughs> Like, get this fucking pretend drug addict off our fucking cell block. He's never even shot up. And, like, the whole jail's like, he's never even shot up. And goes, this fucking, this fucking kid's never shot up. Get him out of here. And fucking, you know, everyone's like, boo this man. They're throwing tomatoes at me. I don't know where they got these tomatoes from in the jail. So they're firing tomatoes at me. They're booing me off the stage. The fucking music turns on as they push me off the stage. I'm like, no. And fucking... This dude, couple cells over, the old school junkie, like I mentioned, I got a little sidetracked with the description there. This dude was fucking like, yo, hey, they called me Waldo in there. By the way, I wasn't the bird man or the bird in there. My cellmate, I, my cellmates, two of them, or well, one, and then he left another one. They, they knew I was the bird and the bird man, but nobody else adopted the bird man nickname in Worcester House of Corrections. They called me Waldo. They called me Waldo because I was skinny. Well, it was. I am skinny. And I wore glasses. So, glasses. And skinniness, they called me, they called me Waldo. So my nickname on the block was not Bird or Birdman or Dirty Bird or any of that shit. My nickname on the block was Waldo. Like, you know, where's Waldo? You gotta find Waldo. Oh, because I wore glasses and I'm skinny. So anyways, the dude's like, Waldo. I'm like, what? He's like, for your first time? I might not even been Waldo yet. I think I might got the Waldo nickname a couple of days later when I was out there hustling coffees during tier time. Fucking successfully, by the way, it was like my first ever jail hustle was uh, successfully getting some, some coffee. And there was actually a cell that was two cells down from me on my left side that I called like Dunkin' Donuts because it was like this dude in there. He looked like like Kurt Cobain. It still looked like a Kurt Cobain look-alike, but like a Worcester jail. And he was in there, like his grandma was sending him money. And he had plenty of money on his books. He had all the coffee in the world. And he would always like, he became jail friends and he would always take care of me. I hope that kid's doing all right. I haven't thought about him in a while, man. But uh, he's from the Boston area. And uh, I called his cell Dunkin' Donuts because I go there every morning. And he'd, he'd fucking have a coffee right here. Make me a coffee every day. And like, because I was indigent because I had no fucking money in my books. But and once we start making some jail friends, uh, a couple of jail hustles, I'm hustling coffee. I got the free dunk. I called his cell Dunkin' Donuts. I was like, I was like Worcester County rolls on Dunkin'. No, that's not the fucking thing. Uh, runs on Dunkin'. I was like, Worcester County runs on Dunkin'. I fucked that joke up. What are you going to do? So I had my Dunkin' Donuts cell over there. But it took me a while to, to be able to get these things and be able to make these little jail bonds where people would help you out. You know, you don't walk in there like, hey, somebody give me coffee. And it was like, bam, they punch you in the mouth. And you're like, oh, shit, that didn't work out well at all. So you have to kind of slowly weasel your way in, which I did. But the dude on the right-hand side of the cell, if I'm looking out my cell, little cell window, the dude to the right the cell was like, Waldo. I'm like, I'm like, what? I was like, I'm not Waldo yet. And they're like, shut up, you're Waldo now. I was like, fuck, all right, Waldo, Waldo at your service, sir. I'm like, please don't rape me. And fucking, uh, so the dude fucking, he goes, what was that fucking... What are you snitching? What are you fucking ratting? I'm like, I'm like, why? I was like, I'm in jail. No, I'm I'm currently in jail. <laughs> How am I snitching or rat? I'm like, I'm in I'm in the block with you, dog. I mean, if I was like snitching, I probably wouldn't be in jail. I'd probably be fucking having a fucking ice cream cone or something. I don't know what the fuck I'd be doing. I wouldn't be sitting in the fucking block next to you. And he's like, is this your first time in Waldo? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, How? No, I I just did I just did 50 years. I got out and then uh yeah, they gave me a couple more months just to wrap up. And they're like, you're only 30. You're not the time. You're only 32. 
I was like, oh shit, oh man, my 50 year murder pretend story jail sentence isn't going to fly. So yes, yes, I am a rookie inmate. I don't know what I'm doing. What have I done wrong? He's like, are you snitching? I was like, I just said I wasn't snitching. I found out he thought I was snitching because I fucking shadily and sneakily like waved the CO over. I'm like, hey, psst, CO, come here. Here, take this note. All right, go, 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 take the note. And the dude was watching me because everybody's watching their cells. There's nothing else to do. You're on 23 hour lockdown. Everybody's just watching what you're doing. And they watched me hand the CO a fucking note. And this dude thought I was fucking, thought I was like snitching on someone. I was like, yo. I'm like, nah. I was like, I just sent a letter. I think it was like to my ex or to my to my parents or my, my sister. I forget who I wrote this letter to. I wrote letters to all of them. But this was the first one where I did things in a poor process, jail, poor jail etiquette process. And and basically it was, is you can't, if you talk to a CO, you have to make sure that there's someone uh, like cool that's with you listening to what you're saying to the CO. So that way all the other convicts, you know, know that you're not telling on them. But it's like, you're in jail. I'm not telling on anyone. Fucking jail. I mean, who fucking starts snitching once they go to jail? I'm not condoning snitching under any circumstance. But, I mean, the smart snitch would probably snitch before you go to jail. People are like, all right, now that I'm in jail, I'm going to start snitching. Like, what the fuck sense does that make? But anyways, they thought because I shadily sent the letter that, like, I was, like, telling on someone or whatnot. And they asked me if it was my first time in jail. And I told them, like, yeah, blah, blah. I was like, I did a couple of days. When I was like 21, but it was only like, you know, because I owed my probation money that I didn't have because I spent all my money on drugs. Shocker. And uh, this was my first real time in jail. And it was fucking wild that they thought that they thought that. And because you have to have somebody next to you when you talk to a CO no matter what. So I learned that as time went off, I needed a question to the CO. I'd have to like, go get one of my jail buddies. Like, hey, hey, gang leader guy, come here. I got a glass of CO if it's cool if I uh, have this cup of coffee. And like, whatever, right? that's a bad example. But whatever, no matter what the scenario is, you have to fucking uh, have somebody who is, you know, there with you listening to your interactions with the CO so that nobody thinks that you're jail snitching on them. Lots of things don't make sense in jail, but that's also where I learned how to do things like pay your debts, which has stuck with me. Um, like my credit score... Since I came out, not like my real credit score, the fucking hospital bill kind of just messed that up for me, I forgot about. But like my street credit score and paying people back and whatnot, um, I learned all that shit in jail. Because before jail, I wasn't paying no one back, dog. I don't care if you're my best friend. My best friends would get it the worst. Uh, girlfriends, family, cousins, aunts, uncles, you name it. I wasn't paying no one back. So my street credit was like a fucking zero with derogatories on there like, didn't pay back, didn't pay back, didn't pay back, never pays back, didn't pay back, piece of shit, scumbag, dirtbag, that's me. But, like, jail is where I learned not to rack up debts you can't pay. Because if you rack up a debt you can't pay in jail, you're gonna get fucked up. And I'm not, like, motherfucking Brock Lesnar, dude. I ain't no fucking, I'm not a fucking super killer and I was scared in jail. So I wasn't gonna be in there, like, strong-arming motherfuckers. So, uh, I had to learn, learn to pay your debts. If you tell someone that you owe them a soup... I don't give a fuck if you have to stab someone in the fucking neck. You better get that soup for him. Or you yourself might get stabbed in the neck and then just gang raped by L block. So things they learned in jail that I've applied when I got out. You know, I learned a lot in jail. You know, oddly enough, it was like life college where they actually teach you things that you actually need to know on the outside when you get out. So I learned more in jail than I did in my three college attempts. Three months in jail. I learned way more than I did at three failed attempts at college. And that is a motherfucking fact. But being in the gym on the block was no motherfucking joke. It was rough, but I did learn how to like grow, mature as a person, pay back debts, uh, hold to your word. Because if your word if your word ain't solid in jail, you're going to get fucked up. Uh, I made sure that not to bite off more than I could chew or not get a debt. Or not like take on, say, drug debts. Uh, all this crazy shit happened in there. I was able to get out and then got mandated to probation with a drug test. I had to fucking go to a sober house, which we know I would donate to for Eclaton LLC. Second shameless plug, E-C-L-A-T-A-N-T. Rewind that, spell it, and then put LLC. Pop that shit on Facebook, drop a like on it, and order yourself a beautiful custom soy candle. And I remember being in there one time, this motherfucker like didn't want to give me, um like I was like, 
they're all eating their jail. They, the commissary came, the canteen came, commissary canteens called different things in different jails. And everybody's like feasting and feasting and feasting. And I was like, Hey, I had nothing. <laughs> it was fuck. It was fucking rough. I had nothing. Cause I was indigent. Everyone's like eating. I was like, Hey, do you think I could have the crumbs at the bottom of your plastic wrapper for your honey bun? Like I see a couple crumbs on the bottom and you're probably just going to throw it away. Can I have those two crumbs? They're like, they're like, no fucking wall. They're not giving your fucking crumbs. You fucking bum. These are my honey buns. You're not getting any. I remember thinking to myself, like, you motherfucker. I didn't say it because I was scared, but I remember thinking it. Like, you motherfucker. I was like, when I get out of here, I'm going to fucking make something of myself. I'm going to start a fucking candle company. I'm going to get back in the car business. I'm going to buy a motherfucking Lexus and have a luxury apartment with a swimming pool. And then, and then I will eat all the fucking honey buns. I please, I'll eat honey buns until my stomach explodes. I remember thinking that when I got out, I was going to eat all the honey buns I wanted. You motherfuckers going to be in there forever, losers. The day I got out, I got food stamps the next day up in Massachusetts. You get like 200 bucks for food stamps. And it was the first time I ever spent food stamps on food as opposed to like selling them for drugs. So I fucking, I I did that and, uh, when I got out, I went with the food stamp card, and now it wasn't even real money. It was like food stamp money, but I remember thinking, like, about a big ass thing of honey buns, yo. Big ass thing of ramen noodles. I remember thinking, like, those fucking clowns in jail didn't want to give me the crumbs of their honey bun. Now look at me. I got the variety pack. There's chocolate frosting, regular frosting. I got a variety pack of honey buns. Oh, and name brand peanut butter. Oh, and Folgers motherfucking Crystals coffee. Not that Keefy shit. Bird gang. Out.